What is going on guys, Manic Badger here, and welcome to another episode of our Fulham career mode. Now, I know it has been a long while, almost two weeks, probably a little bit more than the, the last episode has been out, and I can only apologise, I took a little bit of break over Christmas, and uh, I really needed it, just sort of recharge the batteries, and uh, I did actually come back with uh, an episode recording that I've been trying to upload, my PC's been away a little bit, and uh, it's been upgraded, but there's a couple of tweaking things that I've needed to sort out, and unfortunately, because of that testing, I should have, and it kills me, I should have, you know, got, done a test run first to make everything sure and not use this as the first one, but I recorded the first episode, and basically, um, the sad news to bring you is that I have recorded the episode, and the footage was corrupt, and I couldn't use it, and therefore, this episode is a massive apology, but also just a bit of a catch-up to let you guys know where we are and what there is to look forward to in the coming weeks. So, let's go into the calendar and we'll have a look at the game. So, the episode that I recorded was a special, uh, 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 it was a cup special. We had the Carling Cup semi-final, as you can see, two legs, over two legs against Manchester United. We've beaten Arsenal, we've beaten Man City to get through to the stage and now we had to beat... Man United. We also had a game against Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup to progress to the knockout stages, I believe, or this was the knockout stage, I'm not sure. But anyway, this is what happened. So we went to United, uh, no, they came to Craven Cottage, they came to our home ground, we played them, we won 1 0 in the end, I think it was Inaki Williams who scored. We played extremely well, we contained the possession. And uh, Guedes was playing particularly well, and we sold him. But we'll come on to our transfers in a little while. But his last game was a really good one. Next, we played against Sheffield Wednesday. We were 1-0 down after about half an hour, and it took us until about the 80th minute to score the equaliser. Um, through, I think it was Tim Ream off a corner with a header. Um, I'm really sorry because I'm just like, I'm being... Honest and telling you guys what happened, and uh, I want to show you the footage, but obviously I can't. So the return of the uh, next game against United, we had to go to Old Trafford. We had the goal. We had to be wary of the uh, them obviously coming back. We set up shop. We tried to play possession, played attacking football like we normally do as well. You know, break on the counter, and that's exactly what we did, and we won that game two nil. Um, thanks to two late goals, and I mean late goals, one in the 85th minute, I think it was, and one in injury time, 90th minute, from Ross McCormack, and we went through winning 3-0 on aggregate, an absolutely brilliant performance from the guys, it was the best performance that they've done, and that's why I think it kills me so much, is because we deserved every inch of that game, we deserved every second, we played so well, and I'm not able to show you it. So in the coming weeks, we've got Wigan, KW, KB's FIFA uh, career, the guy who did my intro for me. He's still doing Wigan, so check him out. Um, we've got his Wigan career mode, uh, Wigan team, should I say. And then we've got Charlton Athletic. And then we've got the final game, or the, the, the return leg, the replay of the FA Cup. And we are playing against Sheffield Wednesday, obviously. And as you can see... We've got a couple of games in the league, a nice little bit of a rest in February before. On Sunday, we play the Capital One Cup final against Liverpool, who progressed against West Brom. So that's going to be massive, and I've got a nice little intro planned for you guys. Then we've got quite a hectic schedule. Wolves, Bournemouth, Birmingham, QPR, Millwall, so some really tough fixtures. And then the run-in sees us April. Um, we've got Cardiff, Norwich, Leicester, Bristol, Leeds... Sheffield United, um, Reading, Derby, and then Blackburn. And then that's it. I mean, that is not a lot of episodes at all to finish this season. Um, so, yeah, I've waffled on long enough about what there's to look forward to. But what that means is we're in sixth. We've got um, a total point of 42. That remaining fixtures, if we string a good, you know, I would say 80% of victories together then we are absolutely securing our places in the playoffs and if we can take Bournemouth spot in that automatic promotion playoff uh, automatic promotion place the second place 
and first place will go through, I'd be happy. But if we have to go through the playoffs, we're going to try our best. We didn't. It didn't work last time. It's got to have to work this season because I want to get to the Premier League. Right, now enough of that. Let's go into the squad report and show you guys what exactly has been going on. And... Uh, yeah, that's how we'll end the episode after we look at the squad report. So, <coughs> Mr. Killenberg, uh, up by two, 34 years old. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough money to offer him a contract extension until the sale of Guedes, but it was too late. Uh, SM Can came up to uh, snap him up, so he's joining them afterwards, so we'll need a keeper. In the meantime, we've got Sufjan van der Marl. Uh, the young Dutch keeper. We will need to get a backup, but at the moment he is there if we need him. Yoruba Sissoko is up by one. We've also got Jack Rimmer and Ryan Fredericks at right back. Stearman's up by one. He's been phenomenal with Tim Ream, and um, both of them have really been fantastic. But we could do with some better cover next season if we get into the Premier League. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that. We've got Josh Meekings, who's doing all right, but he is unhappy at the moment. Disappointed at the lack of his matches. He wants to play more. And at the moment, the reason he's not playing is because Stearman and Ream have been so good. Our new signing, the board came to us and said, you need to sign a centre-back. So we signed João Pedro Diaz de Castro from PSG. Brilliant looking player. 69 overall. 19 years of age. We got him for 1.5 million. And he's got some really nice physical stats along with a nice stand tackle. And the rest will come with time. I'm absolutely positive. Eric Palmer Brown's out on loan. He's up by one. On Gain, he's up by two. He's still out on loan. Ariano has been fantastic this season. Up by three. Delgado's up by two. And Amin is up by three as well. Kavanaugh's out on loan. We'll probably look to sell him when he comes back in. He's not really progressing the way I thought he would. But that's what management's about. You have to see what works out for you. He's been on a two-year loan at Carlisle. And, uh, yeah... We could be doing with a little bit of a trim. Um, Daniel Smith up by two. Uh, Schroeder's out on loan up by two. Delhi Ali up by two. One of our best midfielders, if not the best midfielder that we have. Absolutely fantastic player. Ryan Woods, not increasing overall yet, but he's still got some phenomenal stats, especially those physical stats. Some brilliant um, statistics there. And we've also got Christensen up by two, and uh, he just keeps getting better and better. Uh, one of our latest signings, Gianluca Polzetti, the Perlo region, 71 overall, fantastic stats. You cannot argue with that. Look at the acceleration, look at the agility, balance, the passing, range, the curve. The long shots will come, I hope, because I love a long shot taker, as you guys all know, and that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, we've got Soler Oliveira, I think he is on loan with us, yeah, from Napoli. He's okay, I expected a little bit more, but he's up by three. So he has improved, but I think we won't renew that loan. Then we've got Kenneth Faik. Probably going to get rid of him. I don't know. We might have to try him out because he could be like this guy, Max Chambers. Very low stats, but very good. He's been so good in game. It's been incredible. He does not play like a 50-rated player. He plays like a 65 to 70, if not better. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, we've also got Dario Vadejo who's out on loan, up by three. And then we've got Suarez in from loan. He, he has, he did have a good game recently, but he is, I don't really like him is the bottom line. And uh, we're going to look to get rid of him. We're not going to renew his loan. Inaki Williams, the star man of the team, up by two, 80 overall, 14 and a half million worth. Brilliant stats, physicals and everything. His short passing and shot power is great. His long shots are improving. His long passing is improving. His finishing is even better. And it's all good on the Williams front. Mario Gomez, our veteran striker. 79 overall. Sounds like he decreased a little bit in the mental statistics. But apart from that, he's pretty solid. Then we've got Mulich, the moving mountain. Only increased in his, me in his mental. And also up by one overall. McCormack, very solid. His long shots have increased. Shot power's increased. Volleys, curve, but not really that much else. But the stats he's got this season, 30 appearances, 12 goals, 4 assists. He's been really good, and uh, we hope he kicks on now. Mosquito, a brilliant striker. Up by 3, he's come on leaps and bounds. 21 appearances, only 4 goals, but they, have, they were important goals, and we're hoping that he will really 
coming to his own next season in the Premier League. Only 20 years old still, remember that. And then we've got Taggart, who is unhappy, but he is his contract is expiring, so he's joining Ipswich. Um, <clears throat> you can't really do anything, and he's just very unhappy at the moment. And he just he wasn't very good. His stats look all right for a championship team, but I just didn't rate him. I couldn't use him. And we've got Corley Woodrow out on loan. He might be worthwhile keeping an eye on and bringing him back from loan. Oh, well, when he comes back, we'll see what happens. And then we've got Jordan Ibe up by two. Our main man on that left wing, um, for sure, along with our new signing, Martin Rodriguez, who we bought from Colo Colo uh, in South America. Brilliant sprint speed, as you can see. Some really nice technical stats. And this is basically the replacement for uh, Gonzalo Guedes, who we sold to Everton. And we've got four and a half million that we paid for him. So we got um, Martin Rodriguez, we got uh, De Castro, and we also got... Uh, Bolzetti for and we swapped Andrada out as well so we got a handful of players for ha half of the transfer budget and we have got some money left to 2.3 million 15,000 so we have got some money left to make a move in the transfer market but the key thing is the reason why I don't want to play the game is uh, well any of these games in this episode is I want your guys feedback We've seen what the squad looks like. You've seen what we might need to use. So this is your time to say these are the players that we want to ensure that push up the table to get into the playoff places while well, to hold on to the playoff places and also to make sure we get qualification in some form. If we get automatic qualification, that would be awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's basically a very long-winded story. I do realize that, so I apologize. But if you've made it all the way to the end... Thank you very much. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for all the new subscribers as well. It's absolutely brilliant seeing all the people um, getting on board and seeing how Fulham do. And um, hopefully I can still bring you content that you guys want me to sign. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can make it happen. Until next time, guys. Peace.